guess I just wanted to ask ahead of the U.S. Mexico game. I know that you played in a couple of them. What are you? Do you have a standout memory of, of what that rivalry means? Um, yeah, I think the only one I played in was in uh, San Antonio. Um, I think it was another two nothing win. Um, so just try to keep up with the trend, right? You want to keep that going. Um, yeah, but just a rivalry. That's uh, <clears throat> there's no there's no bigger rivalry in my mind. Obviously, um, it's one that. Uh, you know, we're all here in the U.S., but once that game starts, we're, we're divided when it comes to fans, when it comes to allegiances. Um, and it's one that everyone takes to heart. And this is, uh, the f especially to have it the first game of the Hex, is one that can propel you in the right direction. So I know that the boys will be eager uh, to get off on the right foot and to, you know, propel themselves um, into the Hex. Ultimately, you, you would think that Mexico and the U.S. advance, so... This game might not really mean anything when it comes down to it, but at the end of the day, you also want to first game. You want you want to make a statement, and you want to uh, go into Costa Rica feeling confident. For sure, and in San Antonio, especially, what was the atmosphere like for that yeah, game? Yeah, phenomenal. Um, you know, actually, was um, you know, it's it's always going to be more pro pro Mexico, uh, especially that close to the border. But um, you know, it, it was an awesome night. Um, you know, got to come on for a couple of minutes, um, but Jordan, you know, was in that game and, not, and notched the goal, so um, that was fun. It was it was a fun night. It's one that everyone takes uh, extremely seriously. I remember the build up being, um, you know, very focused, very uh, very demanding. The trainings were very very difficult, uh, making sure that um, you know tactically no stone is left uncovered, and making sure that everybody's on the same exact page. So when that game is done, there's no what ifs. For sure, and you've had a lot of accomplishments in your international career as well. Where does that sort of stack up, playing in sort of one of those rivalries that everybody talks about? Does that I rank think, anywhere up there? Yeah, I didn't start the game. I think yeah. anytime you start a game, it's it's a little bit more sig of significance. It wasn't a hex game, you know, that I had done before that I had started. So uh, it was just a friendly, but, um, you know, still, it's, of course, it's always nice to say that you played in one of those uh, in a Mexico-U.S. game. Um, you know, there's always a little bit more bite. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, to be honest, it didn't really stack up. I only played like six or seven minutes, so you know, it is what it is. Sometimes the politics get into, so especially the international level. I mean, do you think that there's anything to that? Was that ever part of it? And do you think that that will change at all, given a couple of days after an election that was sort of polarizing? No, I don't think so. I just hope everyone keeps even heads uh, in the stands. You know, ultimately, we're here to see soccer. We're not here to... Uh, um, make a political statement on the night. It's uh, it's about the football. It's about the, the, the 22 guys that are battling on the field. Um, ultimately, it's about the result, of course. But um, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, it's about soccer. Sure. Any thoughts on Jordan Morris winning the Rookie of the Year award? Should have gone to somebody else, I think. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, well deserved, obviously. You know, to come in as a rookie and bang away as many goals um, as he did. You know, I said it. 15 games in the season, I thought that he should have had 15 goals, and I think he, if he's in the form that he is now, that he is the first uh, 10, 12, 15 games, he probably bangs 25 goals, um, and that, that's the reality of it. That's it's true. Um, so in saying that, it's it's well deserved. Um, it's very rare that that comes along, and obviously. Uh, Without him, uh, we're not in the position that we are in now. So a big part of this team, um, a massive accomplishment, and one that will go down, uh, um, you know, won't be forgotten. It might be hard to, like, quantify, but is he the best rookie you've ever played with? Um, Zach Awani. Yeah, Zach Awani's still by far the best player I've, uh, at a certain time, probably ever played with. <clears throat> um, he is, uh, you know, obviously what happened was unfortunate, but I thought, you know, a year or two years into it that Steve would have been, you know, in the EPL by now for sure. Um, so in saying that, I think Steve was, yeah. Um, but he's up there, of course. When did you start to see it click for Jordan? Like you said, early in the year, it, it wasn't maybe coming from as much as he would have wanted. When did you start that, see that start to change in terms oh, of maybe, his form? Maybe it was not getting called into the Gold Cup. Maybe that was the start of it. Maybe, I don't know, I have to go look back and look at what game, but... Um, you know, the I specifically remember the Orlando game when all three of them were on the field and everything started to click a little bit. Yeah, I think guys came off that field feeling confident, getting a result on the road that kind of righted the ship. Um, obviously, the team started playing a bit better. Nico was more involved, so maybe Jordan was seeing a bit more of the ball. Um, and without Clint, Jordan becomes even more of a focal point. So in saying that, he uh, he probably saw more of the ball. Team was confident, um, you know, and he started to play like uh, we all we all knew that he should. Sure. With all the injuries you guys have had, is it kind of a relief to have this break here and kind of get guys healthy and yeah. ready to take on this? <clears throat> yeah, of course. I think, um, 
yeah, get guys back as, as 100% as you can. Uh, you want you want everybody, all hands on deck, leading up to this last game, uh, last round, this last series, and then into the final game. So um, we we want to give ourselves the best chance, and, and to do that, we got to have uh, we got to have a fully full health roster. Uh, so in saying that, yeah, get get some guys back. I mean, Jordan's already out here jogging around. Flacco's out here participating. Um, I think everybody that's on international duty is ready to go. So let's say in another 10 days, we should have a, a fully rested, fully uh, full roster to go. Training wise, do you find it hard to navigate having such a what is it like 16 day break? Like, is that hard to, to keep your focus when you're after you know having such an emotional win and now having to move on to the final, conference, conference finals? Yeah, I think. I mean, you see both sides of it. Of course, you want to keep the momentum. You want to just keep playing games because you're on a good run of form. Um, guys are playing well. Guys are buzzing. They're hungry, hungry for more three points. So. Uh, yeah, maybe we maybe we would have liked to have Colorado this weekend at home, um, but you know, like we talked about, it's nice to have a full, uh, healthy roster. But you can't do anything about an international break. So, if we did play this game, we'd be missing half of our lineup. Uh, so, in saying that, it's a you know a good opportunity to get the legs uh, refocused, disconnect for for a couple of days. But then, uh, when we're here to work, we're here to work.